Hi, if you like the video, please remember to subscribe. Hi, I'm Rob from RobLandPhoto.com and this is going to be a short little video with the idea of just getting you to think a little bit about um, the lenses that you use on your DSLR or even the lenses that you might want to use, sorry, the zoom settings you might want to use in your compact camera. Um, and maybe I'm just going to go a little bit into maybe the reason why we tend to leave the same sort of lenses on our cameras too often. Um, and kind of what happens when, when we change those lenses. So one of the things that happens, isn't it, when you when you get your brand new DSLR, or maybe you've had one for a while, you can see my you know, my new 600D here, uh, which is the um, T3i, is that it's got the kit lens on it. It's got the 18 to 55, um, and it's a nice kit lens, and it's probably the lens I leave on the on the camera quite a lot um, because when you put uh, a lens on DSLR um, or even change the zoom setting on a compact camera when we look through that little viewfinder on the back that changes the way that we can uh, see the universe and see the world around us and when our camera is set to like a wide angle set 18 millimeters on this particular on this particular lens when we look through that viewfinder when we take the lens cap off we're actually seeing the world in quite a different way. Um, that lens is actually fitting an awful lot of a scene um, into what we can see, and that's quite different to what we see with our eyes normally. And I think what tends to happen is for, for most uh, photographers is that we look through that and we go, wow, how dynamic is this? I can see, what well, you say you're standing in front of a nice landscape or a nice cityscape, there's all this fantastic stuff going on around you and then you look for your camera lens and all of it gets compressed into this little viewfinder or the LCD screen on the back of your camera and you go wow that is amazing that is brilliant I love it and you take a picture but then often when you then look at the photos afterwards maybe when you get home we're looking at the back of the screen or maybe you have them developed if you're doing film you look at them and you can be a little bit disappointed because all that dynamism that you saw when you were looking through the viewfinder has kind of been lost a little bit and maybe you tend to feel that everything looks a little bit too far away. And also the other thing that happens often is that because when we look through the viewfinder when we've got our wide angle lenses on the world becomes a little bit more of an exciting place because you can see more of the scene that you can normally see with your eyes. That, that means that everybody shoots like that. You know, if you go anywhere where there's lots of photographers, chances are if they're shooting like uh, landscapes or something, they've probably got a wide angle lens on and it's probably something like the kit lens that they have on. And so if you want to change, mix up, I dare say, improve your photography a little bit, one of the things we can try and do, we can try and get away from using our little zooms, our little kit lenses, or maybe we've got a better option, at the wide angle. Maybe what we can do is we could move our lens to the 55 millimeter side of things. Maybe even we could put our long zoom on, our 55 to 250 in this case, and zoom it in a little bit. Or, this is kind of a bit of a preview here. We could put something like this on, which is a Canon 40mm f2.8 pancake lens, prime lens that I got with my 600D from Amazon. And often you'll hear on the internet and you'll, you'll see people write about it and they'll say, you know, everybody should have, you know, with your, with your normal lens, you should have a nifty 50, you should have a 50mm lens because they're very cheap. They've got maximum apertures that are very wide, so f1.8. And you can get excellent depth of field for port portraits. But if you've ever used one with a crop sensor body like the 600D and the like, often you'll be a little bit disappointed because you'll fit it. And all of a sudden, all this dynamic world that we could see with our wide angle lens is gone. And all of a sudden, this vis these vistas you wanted to fit in, these buildings with receding lines, these diagonals, all these different ways of looking at things aren't there anymore. And we only see a small portion of it. 
And that can be a real challenge. It's great if you're taking pictures of portraits because you can get nice blurry backgrounds and stuff, or maybe you're doing macro work or you're trying to isolate a small thing. But when you're working with landscapes or cityscapes, um, it can be a real challenge. But I guarantee if you look at some of your favorite photographers, the most dynamic photographs you look at, aside from just portraits, I bet a fair percentage of those were taken with lenses that perhaps weren't 18 millimeters or even wider, but maybe towards the telephoto lens uh, range. Because when you fit something like a 50 millimeter on the on your camera or you use a longer zoom lens, it's not just a zoom in for like wildlife photography or sports photography, but you're using it because you want to isolate a part of, uh, of a scene in front of you. That's a lot more tricky because you have to look a lot harder to, to get your composition, to get that thing that is dynamic um, but those photos are very very different from everybody else who's using their kit lenses or even everybody who's using compact lenses or even mobile phone lenses because one thing that we have in our arsenal that people with mobile phones and compact cameras well not maybe not compact but mobile phones what we have is we have very long focal length lenses that you can zoom in and they don't affect the picture quality you know you have digital zoom don't you on 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 on, uh, on camera phones and this will change the look of your, your photos drastically you can compress scenes you know, buildings and leading lines that were, that, that were stretching away from each other as they go into the distance, all of a sudden sort of start to become straight and bring in, but you can pull things together. And that is a very unusual, compared to what lots of other people are doing, a very unusual look indeed. Now, the beauty with fitting something like the, uh, the 42.8 or 51.8, you know, the, these cheap primes to your camera, is that it forces you to use that perspective. Um, it forces you to maybe step back if you want to fit more in, but it also forces you to, you know, physically look for, for different types of scenes than you would have done with your 18 to 55 set at the wide lens. So if there's one thing you take from this video, uh, what I'd like it to be is when you've got your 18 to 55 on your kit lens, maybe scroll it around to 35 or even 55, take some photos like that. And there's a real big challenge. Obviously, if you've got one of these, stick them on and shoot. As a real big challenge, stick on your telephoto zoom and set it to something like 100 millimeters and then go out and try and take some city photographs or some landscape photographs and you'll come back with stuff that is very, very different from the work of lots of things that are out there. Okay, that's it from me. My name's Rob from RobNonPhoto.com. Thanks for watching.